Hello engineers, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to generate artificial human faces using a technique called Deep Convolution Generative Adversarial Networks or DCGAN for short. Before starting with the video, in the previous video, I asked the quiz question, what is one interesting application of maximum bipartite matching? One really cool application of bipartite matching is the job selection problem. In this, we are given different companies and we are given different candidates that have listed out their preferences for the various different companies. The complete problem can be mapped as a graph where the candidates and the companies are the nodes and the preferences joining them are the edges with the corresponding weights. By solving this maximum bipartite matching, we can assign each candidate to the best preference that they have for the different companies. There are other applications as well, but I find this application really interesting. Okay, so the question for this video is, what is the difference between a discriminative and a generative network? If you watch the video carefully, you would be able to answer this question by watching the video itself, or you can Google the answer to this question. You can answer this question in one line in the comment section below. All right, now let us start with the video. As we can see on the screen, we have images of several different human faces. Human faces sound to alien. These are images of different people. Now, as real as they look, they are actually fake images. There do not exist people that look like this. And this is exactly what we're going to discuss in this video. We are not going to generate images this good and which are of this scale. To generate images of such high quality and of such large size, it takes computers days to learn this task. However, we are going to replicate this task on a small scale. These are some of the images that we are going to generate using the code discussed in this video. In this image, there are various faces. Some faces look quite real and some faces look completely fake. For instance, this face looks quite real. However, these two faces look completely fake. Since we are using neural networks to generate such images, here is a GIF of how the complete training procedure looks like. We are starting from the first epoch and going till 40 epochs until faces are generated. All right, so now let us discuss what are the technical details related to DCGAN. So now let us discuss how the deep convolution generative adversarial networks work. If you were following my YouTube channel for a while, in our previous videos, we have been discussing only a particular class of networks. These networks are called discriminative networks. However, in this video, we are going to discuss a separate class of networks which are called generative networks. Let us consider an example to understand the difference between discriminative and generative networks. Consider the classical task of detecting given an image whether there is a cat or a dog present in that image. In order to train a neural network to do so, we would provide it with a large image data set. That large image dataset would contain a number of cat images and a number of dog images. Until that network correctly learns to classify cats and dogs, we are going to pass in images again and again to the network. Until we reach a specified accuracy, the network is going to optimize over its parameters to learn if there is a cat or a dog present in the image. Networks that are used for such discriminatory tasks are called discriminative networks. Now consider the case that we want a network to output images of a cat. After training on cats and dogs images, it is quite evident that the network would have learned in some parameters of its own how a cat looks and how a dog looks. This intermediate understanding of the network is also called the latent space. Now, since the network has an information in its latent space, how the cat looks, it would be also possible for a network to draw a new image of a cat based on its understanding. 
these class of networks that we use to generate new data instead of discriminating between original data is what are called generative networks. Generative adversarial networks is one such technique or architecture that is used to create a generative model. Now let us see how that architecture looks like. Before discussing the technical details, we can discuss how the GAN model is analogous to a real world example. As an example, consider a firm that creates counterfeit or fake currency and consider its adversarial firm, the police department that tries to detect whether the currency that they have is fake or not. The fake currency firm would manufacture fake notes of different denominations. Then they would send those fake currency notes to the police department. The police department would check whether those fake notes do they look real or do they look fake. At the start, it would be obvious that the fake currency firm would commit some certain mistakes. Pointing out those mistakes or particular patterns, the police department would be able to detect if the currency was fake or not. If the fake currency generating firm starts to correct its mistakes that were pointed out by its adversary, the police firm, then after some time, the currency generating firm would generate such notes that they would be indistinguishable from the real notes. Also, during this training phase, the note generating firm would correct some of its mistakes and maybe even start making some more new mistakes. During this time, the police would also have to point out the previous mistakes but also learn some new patterns or mistakes that are present in that fake note value. If we consider a long duration, then a time would come when the fake currency generating firm is generating currency in such a way that they are indistinguishable from the real notes. And the police firm would not be able to tell whether a note is fake or is it real. They would only have a 50-50 chance of telling whether it is a fake or it is a real note. This particular training procedure and architecture is what constitutes the generative adversarial networks. Similar to the fake currency generating firm, we have what is called a generator model and similar to the police firm, we have what is called a discriminator model. The generator and discriminator can be any machine learning models, but most of the research has been focused by taking these two as neural network models. So the architecture works something like this. As an input, we provide the generator with a random noise image. We can use the most common Gaussian noise to generate such a random noise image. A Gaussian noise model generates noise based on a Gaussian distribution. The generator converts this random noise to a fake image. This fake image is a replica of the training images. The training images as well as the fake generated image are passed on to the discriminator. The discriminator learns not only how the training data looks, but also tries to classify these fake images. Finally, it returns an output whether the image that has been passed is real or fake. The learning procedure over here can be considered analogous to a game. In this game, both the generator and the discriminator are trying to compete against each other and trying to win. In such a case, after appropriate amount of training, both the generator and the discriminator would saturate. They would saturate to a particular performance above which they cannot produce images and detect images. After such a stage is reached, we are going to discard the discriminator network and take the generator network. Then that generator network would be used to produce fake artificial images that are similar to the training images. A more mathematical description of the complete training procedure is given over here. Consider the black distribution as the original training data set distribution, as we can see over here. The blue line over here is showing how the discriminator network is performing, as we can see over here. 
and the green line shows the fake generated data distribution as we can see over here. The X over here is the output of the generator model and Z is the latent space. The generator over here is trying to learn a function that maps from the latent space to the input space. During the start that generator as well as the discriminator are not performing well as we can see through this first graph. The generator is outputting a distribution that is not similar to the training data set and the discriminator is also not able to distinguish between the real and fake as we can see over here. As time progresses the generator as well as the discriminator keep on improving. As we can see the generator distribution keeps on coming closer to the original distribution. The discriminator network also keeps on improving its performance. As we can see in this graph, the discriminator is able to distinguish the real distribution and the fake distribution. And as time progresses, once the generator has learned the distribution, the discriminator is not able to distinguish between both of them. From these graphs, we can also see that the generator has learned to map from the latent space to the input space in a correct manner. And this is how a typical generative adversarial network works. When we replace the discriminator and the generator with a deep convolution neural network, we get what is called DCGAN, Deep Convolution Generative Adversarial Networks. Experimentally, it has been seen that training GANs is not an easy job. GANs are quite delicate and they diverge even if a small hyperparameter change is done on them. Therefore, after a lot of research, DC GANs were developed. The DC GAN research points out specific model architectures and training hyperparameters that help us converge the GANs better. The five architectural guidelines are presented over here. The first guideline is that we are not required to use max pooling layers. Max pooling layers help downsample the images that are passed through the network architecture. Instead of downsampling using max pooling, strided convolutions are used. In strided convolutions, convolutions are performed at a gap which tend to reduce the size of the image. Second is the employment of batch normalization in the convolution neural networks. Batch normalization takes in training images and normalizes those images to a specific point and up to a certain range. By doing so, it helps in convergence of the neural network. The third guideline is that we are not required to use any fully connected layers. Usually for convolution networks, at the start, we have a convolution architecture. Towards the end, we have fully connected neural network layers. Instead, we are required to reduce the size of the image using convolutions and get the final output from them. The fourth guideline is that in the generator network, we have to use ReLU activations after each convolution block and towards the output, we have to use a tan edge activation. The last guideline is that in the discriminator network, we are only allowed to use the leaky ReLU activation function. Activation functions are what adds non-linearity to our convolution neural network. Given an input, if the input is less than zero, then a ReLU activation assigns a value of zero to the output. However, if the value is greater than zero, it simply returns that value. A tan edge activation function maps the input value to a space of minus 1 to 1 and models a tan edge based function. Leaky ReLU is an extension of the ReLU network wherein if the input values are greater than 0, they are returned as it is. However, if the values are less than 0, they are scaled to a very small magnitude and then returned. Keeping in accordance with these five guidelines, the DC GANs converge relatively easily. And we would see these guidelines in action when we go through the code. Alright, so this is it for the technical discussion of DC GANs. Now let us have a brief look at the code.
for the different networks we are using the pytorch library the first step is to create a generator neural network model the generator takes in random noise as input which is also called the latent space z in our case in the generator we have different transpose convolutions and batch normalization layers also through the subsequent layers we apply relu activation and finally towards the end we apply the tan edge activation this is in accordance to the guidelines that we discussed before the next step is the discriminator the discriminator takes in images from the generator and outputs whether they are real or fake as we can see over here the discriminator has convolution 2d layers and batch normalization layers we can also see that we are applying strided convolutions and after each convolution layer or block we are applying the leaky relu activation function towards the end however we are using the sigmoid activation this is also in accordance to the guidelines that we discussed before then we define certain utility functions like load image and generate the image grid that we saw at the start of the video finally we are training the generator and the discriminator network as we can see over here we not only train the discriminator on real images we also train the discriminator network on fake noise generated images we generate the combined loss for the real as well as the fake and use it to train the discriminator network for the generator we use the output prediction of the discriminator network to train the generator network now in order to train these networks perfectly there are certain other details involved as well for now we can leave these details as such finally both the networks have been trained for 40 epochs and after 40 epochs the results are as we discussed at the start of the video and this is what we had to discuss for dc gans all right so this is it for this video if you like the video press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos and thank you for watching bye